Chris Miller, and of course, one and only Quentin Mayo. Chris, I'm going to come to you first because I know I heard from Brendan and Jason a little bit earlier about some of their thoughts. But Chris, what were your thoughts about the Wizards falling just a little bit short, even though Bradley Beal put on a show? I think you guys wax poetic about Bradley Beal. He was terrific tonight, 60 points. And Gilbert, I texted uh, Brendan, I texted Gilbert also and said, uh, your record is about to get taken down. And he was like, that man out there, crazy, crazy. That's what he texts back. So you know that's Gilbert. Uh, by the way, guys, today is, he Gilbert he Arenas 70, he, today is Gilbert Arenas' 75th birthday, too. So make sure you send him a happy birthday uh, on Twitter. Uh, I want to say Chris, this about you, Bradley. Chris, do you guys do you, realize he scored you, 91 points against the Sixers this year? It feels like, yeah. 91. No, 91. he scored 91 in no, two games. Yeah. Like so uh, I'm looking forward to that third game against the Sixers to see how they try to figure him out. The biggest cause for concern that I have, guys, is with 26 seconds left in the game, Russell Westbrook left the game with an injured hand. That's cause for concern. But, um, Jason, I'm going to do it again. Under five in this game. Just go back and look. Yep. Joel Embiid got an and one at the 458 mark to put the Wizards down 131-127. He got two and ones, and Ben Simmons got an and one. Too much fouling down the stretch. And then the fact that Bradley Beal only scored one point in the last 635 of this game, there might have been some fatigue there. But, I mean, he carried the team for the entire game. But, listen, you went 12 rounds with the heavyweight champ in Philly, right? They tried to knock you out. You kept fighting. This is the Wizards team that we're excited to see because we feel like they can compete against anybody in the NBA. They just came up a little bit short tonight, Wes. Guys, there was a, a screen that was mentioned earlier in, in the crossover that talked about Bradley Beal's scoring proficiency at the 60 points and the all-time leaders in Wizards scoring. One thing I noted about that, and I want, I want you guys to look at this again if you can, because there's something quite remarkable about the performance <laughs> of Bradley Beal. The fact that he's on this list three times. Three times. This dude puts exactly. up buckets like I put on shoes. Like, it's it's literally <laughs> insane to think that you're going to contain Bradley Beal. So the fact that he's been able to do this, even in a loss, it's I know it's frustrating as all get out for Wizards fans, but look at it again. He's up there with Gil. We talked about him tying that. But Earl of Pearl's on this. The legend Phil Chenier's on this list. Gilbert's on here twice. Bradley Beal is a walking bucket. Anybody saying that this man is not all NBA, not all-star material, I, I literally, I'm going to tune you out. Like, I'm cutting off conversations. Conversations. I would leave your number out of my phone. I cannot allow any more disparaging of the name of Bradley Beal. Go ahead, Q. Hey, Wes. And Bradley Beal would trade every single one of those accolades for Ws. That's the type of player Absolutely. he is. This team was literally looked lifeless at halftime. He single-handedly carried this team back into this game. He had 22 points in a quarter. It was at, at this point, we're talking, we gotta be realistic with ourselves. This is not just an all-star caliber player, an all-NBA caliber player. Glenn Consor <laughs> said it on the post-game, I mean, during the broadcast. It's the best shooting guard in the NBA. I mean, let's, we, can, we can sit here and, and do numbers. This is the best defensive team in the National Basketball Association, and Bradley Bill hung 60. He should have had 80, and we y'all, Chris Miller said something about fatigue. Only people that was fatigued was the officials because he should have been at the free throw line 40 more times in the fourth quarter. I just, I just can't begin to, to even imagine what more he can do. But I'm telling you, he would trade every single one of these accolades for Ws. Scott Brooks has talked about slow starts and things of that nature. You had another slow start tonight, and it took a superhuman effort from Bradley Beal to keep this team in the game. You need to start faster. Help him be better, like, for the entire team. I mean, I've sat here every help? single loss and said, every loss I've said, we got to stop wasting Bradley Beal performances. Great. He dropped 60. They're 2-6. and six. Like, they, we got we to start figuring some stuff out now. Brendan, I've got a question. Hey, hey, Q, hey Q, i got a question, though. Oh, you want to go ahead? Go ahead. Is, go ahead. Is, is, is Gilbert Arenas, uh, not Gilbert Arenas, is uh, James Harden considered a two-guard? He is considered a two-guard. So, Bradley, so you got Bradley Beal better ahead of James? Right now, I do. Ooh. I like this. Go ahead. Say it. Right, right, right. Right, like, like okay. You going to tweet okay. that? You going to tweet it? I don't have to tweet it. I said it on live television. <laughs> okay. Y'all keep clipping for y'all. Y'all clipping and repurpose it how you want James to. James is out here a little out of shape, looking like Rick Ross. A little. Still I was giving guys a little. Yeah, that's, a not, little. that's not Harden. That's Rick Ross. Ain't nothing Ross. little about James Harden his weight right now. No, that's Rick son. Ross. Okay, then, Brendan. So, so here's the question, and it's going to seem like sacrilege, but I'm going to ask it. We've said there's nothing more that Bradley Bill can do. I'm going to ask you, is there anything more that Bradley Bill can do? 
Uh, no, not this game. Like, like Bradley, the team was down. Bradley Beal ratcheted up his scoring, and that's and he he turned it on, and that's what they needed him to do. Uh, there was nothing more that Bradley Beal, I think, honestly could have done. Listen, there was an open three that he could have possibly hit that could have maybe turned the fortunes of this game, but that's nitpicking. <laughs> that's that's nitpicking. Right. I'm not when you score sixty, I'm not here to nitpick. No, there's nothing else Bradley Beal could have done. He was absolutely cooking. He would listen. He was on the grill with the kiss the cook apron on. He Ooh. was cooking, giving you everything you need. He had burgers, dogs, ribs, <laughs> lamb chops, pork <laughs> chops, whatever you needed. You Bradley Beal was out there cooking just like that, man. With he Frankie Beverly and Maze Payne in the background. I already know how we get down, Unc, on the yeah. grill. That's how we do it. So and stick. He had them, he had them, le he had them leather, leather sandals on. Not the them. Got you to. know, that's when you know the person can really with cook. With his heel that's out how the he was cooking one, tonight. One of them all. Go ahead and take this on over there to your mom and them. Go ahead. Go ahead, young buck. Go ahead. Yeah, I yeah, see what you're talking about there. So Sticks, answer me this then. If we can't question Bradley Beal, I do have to mention Thomas Bryant. Only 11 points tonight, six boards. We were expecting a little more. Now, I know he had to deal with JoJo, but I would assume that TB could have given us just a little bit more on the offensive end, right? Man, the ball was in Bradley Beal's hands. He was cooking. No. Keep the ball <laughs> in Bradley Beal's hands. The fact that Thomas Bryant didn't have that good of a production tonight was surely for the fact that <laughs> Brad was cooking. 60 points tonight? I mean, that was an amazing performance. The only thing, and mind you, Brendan said you don't want to nitpick this performance because 60 points is 60 points. But in the fourth quarter, when the offense went a little stagnant, I would have rather had Bradley Beal keeping that foot on that gas, keep on going, keep on attacking. He deferred a couple shots here and there, and a couple of his teammates couldn't make those shots. So that's the only thing, and I mean the only thing that I saw, because otherwise he was shooting his shot. If it didn't go in, he was following it. He was getting the rebound and going right back up for points. The Oh, man, I feel terrible for Brad because in all of those amazing point performances, they've come out in losses. And you really want to see your team go out there and succeed because obviously with Tobias Harris being the Eastern Conference Player of the Week, He's not better than Bradley Beal, but because his team is winning, he's getting those accolades. Because the whole team is doing well, he's getting those accolades. If Bradley Beal had a record of 6-1, and 6-2, and two, hey, you could have seen him easily be Eastern Conference Player of the Week. They say rising tide raises all ships. I get that, but I want to talk to Chris Miller real quick, because, Chris, we talk about that, you know, the scoring from the others. That's been a conversation we've had all season long. And when you look at Philly, six of their players in double-digit scoring, and you look at the Wizards, it's only four. And, of course, Brad, you know, being, like, lengths ahead of all the other players. Yeah. So I'm looking at it like, could is it not fair for us to expect a little bit more, especially with guys from, like, Rui, maybe Denny as well? Yeah, this was an interesting game seeing Denny and Rory really not be.